I wish more people understood that. If a DM does ignore or try to play around one thing you said you didn't want, let it be on session zero or further, you do need to get the fuck out of that game. Bad D&D is worse than no D&D, and people should know that dragging a bad game is pointless and often harmful. In a game I was in, a player explicitly stated that they weren't comfortable with harm to children off-camera or in-camera. It first started with the DM describing child slaves, with all the implications from that whole deal. And it ended up with him putting an enemy group in front of us, with a child who, despite our best efforts, ended up having a horrid death in front of us. We still tried to make it work, but a few sessions later we ended up quitting after the DM had a huge tantrum about I am the DM, and you can say no to whatever I put you through. I really, really wish I was making this up. If a DM can't understand consent, it's just not worth it. Get the fuck away from there. There's better players and better games. Don't let peer pressure or conflict avoidance force you to keep playing somewhere with people that do not respect you. You'll find better groups out there. Keep trying. Eventually, you'll be able to find like-minded people that work much better with you and have a good understanding of respect. I couldn't love my group more. And as a last thing, if you're the kind of person who gets pissed off about people establishing boundaries, you can honestly fuck off. TLDR? If a DM shows to be unable to understand consent, that's a doomed game. Run away for your own good. There is better people out there. Welcome to my library, dear guest. My name is Cool, and I will be your storyteller. You'll probably wonder what this little segment just now was about. Well, it was what set today's story into motion. This is something you wouldn't believe anybody disagrees with, right? Consent is important. Always. I hope I don't have to tell you that. However, some people... Well, some people step all over it, with excuses like, it's just a game. It is a game. A game where people try to have fun. Yet the poor souls that were part of this story most definitely did not. Let us begin. So, I made a post talking about consent in r slash d Here's the full story of that horrid, horrid campaign. By the author, Sigdom. So first, let me preface this with a disclaimer. English is my third language, so I may screw up some things. I'll do my best to keep this easy to understand. Also, edited to add a TLDR for ease of reading. So, huh. I made this post, which we just read, which has ended up with some horror story worthy content by itself. People get seriously worked up for talking about consent, huh? The campaign I want to talk about happened years ago, 2019 specifically. I've been thinking about sharing that whole ordeal for quite a long time now, but since someone asked about it after someone cross-posted the deal, I'll be finally telling the thing. Let me sum up the people in this group, who will be identified with the subsequent names. The DM will be referred to as the DM. Youngest one in the group, about one year younger than me. The main problem, surprisingly not the DM, will be named Minotaur. For context, this person is a borderline sociopathic person who had groomed the DM into a relationship ever since he was 14 and Minotaur was 21. Oh boy. We were all adults when the campaign happened, though. The player who had their consent stepped on will be called Dwarf. After their character. They were the one who ended up pairing with me in this whole ordeal. 
We didn't know much about each other before the game started, but had been acquaintances for years. There is Centaur, a bit older than Minotaur. I found out about this much later, but he had been in a trio with the DM and Minotaur. Despite knowing that the DM had been groomed, you know. Then there is Human, who is largely irrelevant to most of this. And then there is Loxodon. Loxodon was invited with no prior warning to the campaign. Five sessions in. I did not know him at all, but he proclaimed, proudly, to be a Nazi. I still don't know how or why the DM and Minotaur invited him there, considering most of the group was queer in some way. The group, excluding Loxodon, had known each other for years. Some of them were childhood friends, some of them were friends of friends. But we had been in RP forums and closed spaces for a while. Most of them even lived in the same city. Loxodon and me were the external ones, although I think Human was studying abroad at the time. We had lost contact for a year, maybe, and then I hit them up with, hey, we could maybe play d and it could be fun. A few months later, the DM offered to, well, DM. And so, the campaign started. There was a session zero where some things were discussed. I don't recall everything, but one of the hard don'ts came from Dwarf, who asked specifically for no explicit child harm, especially on camera. Children die, of course, but there is a difference between it being a background thing and describing the whole deal in detail. There were more things, but I don't recall them all. I mentioned that I wanted to keep away from furry content on my end, i.e. don't turn my character into a furry, because the DM, Minotaur, Human, and Centaur did make rather questionable furry stuff. The DM accepted, and so the campaign began. The first sessions went smoothly, minimal combat, minimal issue, apart from the DM favoring Minotaur at all moments. This was a given. Their relationship had always been really unhealthy. We just didn't know that he was groomed from so early on. And the DM would very much do anything Minotaur asked him. The hard no's took a few sessions to become relevant. It started with a situation in which two donkeys were gifted to the party, but they were untamed so Minotaur took the decision to tame them up. Animal handling, you'd guess. Speak with animals. Anything. So, uh, nope. He transformed into a donkey and had a plus 30 minute scene of sexual bullshit with the donkeys. All of while we did voice it was uncomfortable and that we'd rather move on. The DM? favored Minotaur, as expected, and things went on for a while. A bit after, there was a scene where we found some children in an underground basement, possibly slaves, beaten up and described in great detail. I honestly don't recall much of what the kids were giving to the plot, and it was just a bit uncomfortable. But we moved on. First, big yikes happened a bit after. The party ended up fighting a group of bandits, I think. Notably, there was one child amongst the bandits, trained to be a bandit. Just the sort of, the poor kid had nothing in his life, so he joined the questionable people. The fight went on, with Dwarf making great strides to avoid the child from being harmed. Their character was very much a dad in heart, and this was a normal behavior for a dwarf. The battle was pretty much over, the kid was safe, and then... The DMPC decided to kill the child. I don't know if it was burning hands or hellish rebuke, 
but he described in great detail how the fire consumed the kid, paired with very detailed descriptions on the matter. Even with constant reminders of, hey, you agreed not to do this on session zero. Kid killed, combat finished, we had some arguing in character, DMPC somehow still went with the party despite being an utter murder hobo, and we ended the session. The one thing that they specifically asked not to be included. Okay, first off, bestiality is already a huge red flag, obviously. Oh, but our wild sheep, we were the same species. No, 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 no. Don't even try to defend this very strange and yucky thing you just did. But then the child part. I'm much like dwarf in that department. Sure, children do get hurt. But I do not want any such scenes to take place on camera. When you find a village that has been raided, you may find a dead child among the corpses. That, to me, is still different to actively seeing them being slaughtered and having it described to you. It's a big no for me. So to have something that they very clearly stated so obviously violated for literally no reason whatsoever. Now you're just going out of your way to be a pain and everyone's behind. <sighs> anyway, let us continue. Things started to get worse after session 5. Up until then, combat had been scarce. Session 5 marked the first big dungeon, which first combat in ended up with two PCs killed after an incredibly unbalanced encounter. Centaur and DMPC died. They got their replacement PCs shortly after. The combat was horribly unbalanced, with a gazer, a helmed horror, two or three spellcasters, two adder caps, and a displacer beast thrown against a level 4 party. The only reason we didn't TPK is because my character managed to crit the gazer, since he was literally the only character that could reach it, since the whole terrain was made in the enemy's favor. So, things went on. We had our in-game drama. I had never played D&D before, so I assumed this was normal, and we went on. The dungeon was horrible. Second big red flag came shortly after. Session 7 or 8, the dungeon lasted 5 sessions, I told the DM a few days ahead I would be unable to attend the latest hour, because there was a family dinner and I had no way to cancel. For 3 hours, while I was in, the session was perfectly peaceful. Combat started just after I had to take my leave. Ambushed by furries. Just a bunch of weird creatures, all of them resistant or immune to non-magical damage. And no one but my character, due to artificer stuff, and Minotaur had magical weapons. The second I leave, I get a DM from Dwarf. Hey, so... The DM immediately made your character unconscious, and he is targeting him, with advantage due to unconsciousness, with the enemies. The main objective of that fight was to try to turn my character into a were-creature. Dwarf was a battlemaster and had the shield master feat, so he put all his resources into trying to protect my unconscious character while I wasn't in the game. DM spent the entire combat trying to bypass that. By some sheer insane luck, my character managed to not catch the were furry thing. But the DM was left incredibly frustrated by that. I suspect this had been Minotaur's idea, since he always tried to force furry content onto me. I don't know how people think about what I am about to say, but usually in the groups I play, when a player is unable to make it, their characters are effectively in a stasis. They come along, but they're pretty much just T-posing, doing nothing. Also meaning they do not fight, but also do not get hurt or killed in a fight, 
unless the player allows someone else to play their character. And even when they do, that character should never get killed or turned into something the player has explicitly stated they never wanted. Something like that goes without saying. Usually, anyway. Moving on. Next session, I'm not feeling it. Loxodon gets invited out of the blue. He is an asshole. Loud, awful rules lawyer, except he had no idea about the rules. Joins Minotaur into interrupting everyone with fake made up rules. The DM introduces some cards that made the combats more exciting. Suggested by Loxodon, which made crit fails have big consequences. I mean, your character swings the sword and cuts his own head off, dying instantly kind of consequences. Some of us say that's a bit extreme. There's much arguing done. The DM says that he will reward players that use the cards. This comes up paired with the fact that he had been giving all the loot to Minotaur. Money, magic items, and so on even before introducing the cards. Literally, the Minotaur ate a mimic as a giant frog once, and somehow they gave him a permanent 1d6 extra acid damage whenever you swallow enemies with transformation that let you do so. Oh, the Minotaur also misunderstood rules, and was always dashing and attacking as part of the same action for some reason. At this point, there is much talk between Dwarf and me. Centaur seems to be pretty uncomfortable. Privately, he tells us that Minotaur had been abusive to him, and that he started yelling at him in his own home, and that he actually had considered leaving, but didn't. It was during one of the latest sessions where Loxodon decided to start calling my character slurs. Not in-game, but as a player. He was a drab. Imagine the rest. There was a hefty amount of transphobia in it too, despite my character not having any indication of being trans. But everyone knows all elves are traps. That brings us to the latest session. The dungeon's final combat. A four-hour combat against an impossible group of enemies, including a Gorgon that was ready to petrify the whole party with no way to avoid. Which managed to petrify the Minotaur, who spent the entire combat bossing people and harassing everyone because he was bored. A dragon, a quotal, a bunch of humanoids, a displacer beast, an elf mage, a helmed horror, and an arakakra with multi-attack and something else I'm forgetting some of which attacked from our back after we specifically checked the previous rooms for secret entrances, traps, and so on. And critted while doing so. The enemies attacking from the back were designed specifically to target my character alone, who was ranged. Combat went on. As expected, everyone got downed. Loxodon got killed and Dwarf was close to it. Last character still up was my artificer, who, being terrified of being held captive for story reasons, happened before, almost got him killed, decided to try to run away from the whole ordeal to seek help. Used his latest spell slot to cast invisibility and ran away, back to the entrance. The DM told me I wasn't allowed. He decided the entrance was suddenly collapsed, and there's four werefuries patrolling it. I was forced to just surrender. DM got really angry about it after the session. I had mentioned this before, but experience wasn't shared equally. He rewarded roleplay instead, which meant that the Minotaur was two levels ahead of the party and got the biggest XP in the session despite having been a statue the whole time. The DM told me he would have my experience. Be 
because their character is chaotic good. But he abandoned the party, which is an asshole move and isn't logical with your character. Let's remember my character was trying to seek help and had a particular thing with having been caught by the enemies in the past and hence was terrified of it happening again. Red flags after red flags, oh my. Apart from Loxodong being an obvious asshole this entire time, I, I really don't want to be too mean on the DM. He was a victim more than anybody else, really. I acknowledge that. However, he is still a bad DM. And at some point, you do have to take responsibility for your own actions as well. However, in the end, this is a D&D channel. I am certain I do not need to let you all know how entirely wrong the whole background story of this is. But in the end, it isn't what this story is about. I just wanted it to be said. The DM is a victim here. However, locks it on a Minotaur, I can dunk on as much as I want. Keeping all that in the back of our minds, we go on. Dwarf and me were already pretty close to leaving. That's when the DM hits us up and decides everyone will get a different, permanent, curse. For no reason at all. Minotaur was of course excluded. He hit me up to tell me what I was getting. And this was when the DM finally had his I'm the DM and you can't tell me no tantrum. Have a censored screenshot. I will be showing the screenshot right now. The I do not speak Spanish, so I won't be narrating this, but it does exist. Have a look. Translated from Spanish. So, the effect is Crystallis Paranoia. When you get in high stress situations, like a combat or hard situations, and up until the stress goes down, you have to roll a DC 15 wisdom save. The save my character was weakened. If you pass, nothing happens. If you fail, you have disadvantage because the woman, his patron, is fucking up with you. And probably, as a funny prank, you're going to be a wear rat because you didn't get captured immediately. Where stuff was my hard no from session zero, because the group had furries who, yeah, have a bit of a habit of sexualizing them to no end. There was a Zophilia scene even. What? No. I'm sorry, but no, DM. That's too much. The crystal thing is pretty insane by itself because a 15 wisdom saving throw DC or getting disadvantage is really hard to deal with. It meant that literally 75% of my turns would have disadvantage. But I'm willing to accept it for plot reasons. But I'm cutting the line at the lycanthropy. I'm sorry, but I won't deal with that. Wait, what do you mean with no? Like, I am the master. The thing went on. Send a video about how DMs have the ultimate say in anything. Got extremely mad because I accused him of being a bad DM. Now that I have more experience as a player, I know that putting a curse on a character that means almost perma disadvantage on everything in an already deadly campaign is just a way to want to kill said character. But at the time, I was even willing to deal with that. I just refused to give in to the one thing I wasn't up to. Engaging in fairy content with a group who had the druid turn into a donkey to fuck other donkeys. That's when I left the campaign. Dwarf did the same after saying life was busy and they just 
didn't have the time. This was a group of friends after all, so we sought to not stir up more things. Centaur was almost close to leaving after having talked at length about how he felt bullied by Minotaur. Human also had told us at some point that he felt pretty bad about how controlling Minotaur was. I decided I'd be DMing my own campaign afterwards. Invited Dwarf in, invited Centaur in, and I tried to invite Human. Human got his phone read by Minotaur, who had full control over both the DMs and the human social media and could take their phones whenever to check their DMs and private stuff. Minotaur and the DM got so incredibly worked up about it. Human ended up siding with them because, well, they're my childhood friends. We ended up cutting contact and I haven't ever regretted it since. This is a mouthful, so let me leave it with a last happy note. Dwarf and I went on to have better sessions with a better group. Centaur player ended up going his own way. I found out only later about him having done a trio with the DM and Minotaur, with all the grooming implications it had. We've ever since found a group of way saner people and we're currently having multiple active campaigns in, with the longest one being plus 80 sessions. We understand consent and everyone's limits, and we put a great work and joy into the whole thing. Couldn't love them more, honestly. We even do a lot, and I mean a lot, of art of the whole thing, since most of us are artists. I wish I had known that bad D&D is worse than no D&D. But for other people, I want to recommend not staying in toxic groups. There's better people, and once you find the people you're comfortable with, this hobby is so incredibly rewarding. TLDR Played with a group of friends after losing contact for a while, which had some unhealthy dynamics going on. Asked for two hard no's, no harm to children and forcing furry shit to others. Campaign progressively got worse, boundary-wise. And specifically, the two hard nose were forced onto the players that did not want that shit. Also, at some point, there was a Zophalia scene regarding donkeys. So... Yeah... All of that is a thing. Really, I don't know what to say to such stories sometimes. The only thing I really can say is that I hope that karma will stalk Minotaur's every step. When being an asshole isn't enough and you also- <sighs> I'm happy the dwarf and the author here got a happy ending out of all of this. I just also sincerely hope that the DM and human will be able to cut all ties with Minotaur at some point. But again, that is not a story for this channel. I will do something I have done before, though. I will link a TTRPG consent sheet in the description. Especially when playing with a new group, this stuff is important to establish. So things like this hopefully do not happen. Also, remember to also have your DM fill out the sheet. Not only the players. That all being said and done, let us move on to today's exhibition journal. Today, we have some very spooky fan art made by Sinkhole Equity. I hope I said that right. I'm in love with this pixel art style. Really gives me some horror game vibes, which I adore. As for that shadow in the dark, I'm not pretty sure I know who that is. Stop that! <clears throat> anyway, thank you so much for your fan art, Sinkhole Equity. Their socials are displayed on screen. I should also mention, if you wish to submit any art of your own, you can do so by sending it to me per my email linked in my about section or my Discord server, the link to which is in the description below. 
All this being said and done, I hope you enjoyed your stay and that I will see you again soon. For there are always more stories to be shared.